we shall commence this module by discussing about Indian economy. Indian economy is often referred to as an agrarian economy with a large share of population employed in agriculture. The economic survey of 2014-15 notes that agriculture contributes around 18% of India's GDP. Also, almost 50% of the population depends on agriculture. Agriculture has important linkages with other sectors in the economy in that it provides raw material to the agro-based industries on the one hand and creates demand for manufacturers and services on the other. Hence, robust agricultural performance has multiplier effects for the rest of the economy. The onus of providing food for industrial workers and other non-agricultural sections of the population lies on the agricultural sector, whereby it is crucial to ensure that both production and productivity in this sector increases to keep inflationary pressures under control. The latter has direct implications for cost of living and hence wages and salaries and in turn competitiveness in domestic and international markets. Agriculture output depends on both the area under cultivation and the productivity of factors employed in agriculture, both labor and capital. There are limitations to increase in acreage. Labor productivity due to disguised unemployment is close to zero. In this context, in order to ensure availability of food grains and non-food grains to keep inflationary pressures at bay and to conserve the scarce foreign exchange by reducing India's dependence on imports of food grains and non-food grains, what is needed is a secular increase in land productivity. In sum, output is a function of both acreage and yield per acre. Increases in the former are not possible. Therefore, any increase in output can be obtained largely if productivity improves. After starting this module, you shall be able to know about agricultural production and productivity in India, understand the agricultural performance of India, know the trends of production and land use, identify the main causes of low productivity. Now let us look at the agricultural performance. In this section, we examine the trends in agriculture output and productivity since 1950 to the most recent period for which data is available. Increase in agriculture output and improvements in productivity are crucial for food security of the large mass of population in both agriculture and non-agriculture sectors. Food security is defined as increased availability of food access to food by ensuring entitlements and nutritional adequacy of the food consumed rather than mere calorie count. Availability is made of two components, production and imports. Growth in production is intrinsically linked to growth in productivity as possibilities of increasing acreage are limited. An important part of food security comprises increases in production which can be increased via productivity improvements. In the post-independence period, Indian policy makers concentrated more on heavy and capital goods industry in the second five-year plan with the assumption that agriculture would continue to perform well and provide food to the large industrial workforce. However, Food crisis and the wage goods constraint of the mid-1960s led to the introduction of modern technology in agriculture. This comprised the use of divisible inputs like the high yield variety of seeds, provision of irrigation and availability of fertilizers. However, these were not the inputs which were available on the farm. Rather, these had to be purchased for cash. This neutral to scale technology in agriculture was expected to help the country tide over the food crisis and promote agricultural growth at an accelerated pace. 
However, empirical studies have shown that the benefits of this technology were confirmed to some regions, to large farmers and to some food crops like wheat and to some extent rice. The benefits of modern technology spread to maize only in the 1980s, while benefit to oil seed and pulses have been largely negligible. Now, we shall discuss the trends in production and land use. Agricultural output can be divided into food grain production and non-food grain production. Food grains comprise cereals and pulses. Cereals include rice, wheat, jowar, bajra, maize, etc. And pulses include mung, gram, masur, arhar, etc. Non-food grains are made up of cash crops like oil seeds, sunflower, groundnut, rapeseed, mustard, sesame, etc. Sugarcane, tobacco, jute, tea, coffee, cashew, coconut, vegetables and fruits. In India, food grains are produced on almost three-fourths of the gross crop area. Total food grain production in India increased from 82 million tons in 1960-61 to 108.4 million tons in 1970-71. By 1990-91, it rose to 176.4 million tons and in the next 10 years to 200 million tons. By 2008-9, the figure stood at 229.9 million tons. Food grain production for the period 2013-14 is 265.6 million tons and the advanced estimate for 2014 to 15 is 257.07 million tons source is economic survey 2008 9 2014 and 15 the output of pulses has been marked by an erratic performance pulses output increased from around 8 million tons in 1950 51 to 12.7 million tons but declined to 10.63 million tons in 1980-81. Subsequently, it rose to 14 million tons in 1990-91 but declined to 11 million tons in 2000-2001. By 2012-13, it rose to 18 million tons. Oil seed production increased from 5 million tons to 9 million tons in 1880-81 and jumped to 18.6 million tons in 1990-91 and 31 million tons in 2012-13. Cotton and sugarcane have registered sharp increases from 3 million tons of cotton and 57 million tons of sugarcane in 1950-51 to 34 million tons and 339 million tons respectively in 2012-13. For cotton major increases were registered in the period after 2000. Between 1950-51 and 2010-11, the percentage share of cultivable area under coarse cereals has declined. Area under pulses fell between 1950 and 1990 after which there has been only a marginal gain in 2010-11. Percentage area under wheat has continually increased from 4% in 1950-51 to 8% in 1990-91 and more than 10% in 2011-12. Percentage area under oil seeds has increased from 5% to 9% in 2011-12 and area under cotton and sugarcane has doubled to 2% and 4% respectively in 2011-12. In 2012-13, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh and Punjab produced almost 40% of rice, whereas 65% of wheat was grown in Punjab, UP and Madhya Pradesh. 53% of pulses came from Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra, whereas 67% of oil seeds are grown in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. 40% of sugarcane comes from UP, while 70% cotton comes from Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra. In terms of constant 1999-2000 prices, 
agricultural production grew at the rate of 2.5% in the period before the green revolution from the late 1960s to 1980-81 real growth was 2.4% over the 1980s and the 1990s real growth averaged at 3.5% but for 1997-98 to 2006-07 the rate decelerated to 2.5% the target growth rate for the 12th plan was 4% at 2011 constant prices. The sector registered real growth of 1.2% in 2012 to 13, 3.7% in 2013-14 and 1.1% in 2014 15. Share of agriculture and alien sectors in total gross capital formation shows a decline from 8.6% in 2011-12 to 7.9% in 2013-14. Next, we shall discuss the trends in productivity. For food grains, the largest increases in productivity have been registered for wheat, for which the yield per hectare has grown from 650 kgs in 1950-51 to 1307 kgs in 1970-71, 2281 kgs in 1990-91, 2800 kgs in 2007-8 and 3140 kgs in 2011-12. For rice, the increase in productivity has not been this dramatic. The yield per hectare rose from 668 kgs in 1950-51 to 1123 kgs in 1970 71, 1740 kgs in 1990 91, and 2202 kgs in 2007 8 to 2372 kgs in 2011 12. For coarse cereals, yield increased from 408 kgs in 1950 51 to 1593 kgs in 2011-12. The weakest performer has been the pulses in which the productivity has increased from 441 kg per hectare in 1950-51 to 524 kgs in 1970-71 to 625 kgs in 2007-8. By 2011-12 it increased to 694 kgs. Within this group productivity of gram has doubled from 482 kgs to 912 kgs between 1950-51 to 2011-12 but for Tar Arhar there has been a decline in productivity from 788 kgs to 656 kgs between 1950-51 and 2011-12. In sum Overall productivity of food grains has increased from 522 kgs to 2059 kgs between 1950-51 and 2011-12. Within non-food grains yield per hectare figures for oil seeds show a rise in productivity from 481 kgs in 1950-51 to 771 kgs in 1990-91. 810 kgs in 2000-2001 and 1135 kgs in 2011-12. For ground nut, the increase is from 775 kgs to 1305 kgs between 1950-51 and 2011-12. Rapeseed and mustard from 368 kgs to 1145 kgs. Soya bean from 426 kgs to 1207 kgs and sunflower from 653 kgs to 692 kgs. From this data on trends in production and productivity, one may conclude that over time both production and productivity have increased in India. The increases in the aggregate food grains and non-food grains are made of Component crops with varied trends and the gains in one crop are offset by decline in other crops. Moreover, growth in productivity also has been slow. 
In the international context for the year 2011, India has the second highest proportion of arable land in the world. It produces 12.3% of world's wheat output which is the third largest after China and USA. 21.7% of world's rice output which is the second largest after China and has the highest share of pulses at 25.9%. India is the second largest producer of groundnut and the third largest producer of rapeseed where the respective shares of 18.2% and 13.3% respectively in 2011. India has the distinction of being the largest producer of fruits and vegetables, especially potatoes and onions. It produces 19% of total world output of sugarcane, 20.6% of tea and 3.6% of coffee. It is the largest producer of jute and has a share of 54.6%. It is the second largest producer of cotton after China with a share of 32.5%. However, notwithstanding these impressive figures, Indian performance on the productivity front is dismal in comparison to other countries, especially China. We find that compared to a sample of countries, India has one of the lowest productivity in most crops. In 2002 for rice, India had lower productivity vis-a-vis -vis China, Egypt, USA, Japan, Bangladesh and the world average. It was marginally better than Pakistan. UK had yield above 8000 kgs per hectare in 2002 compared to India's 2770 kgs which was lower than China, France and slightly better than Pakistan and Bangladesh. For maize, India had the lowest productivity, 1705 kgs in a sample of 7 countries with the highest figure for Italy, 9560 kgs and the world average of more than 4000 kgs. Even for groundnut, China had a yield of 2,986 kgs per hectare, USA was 2,986 kgs and Brazil had 2,043 kgs in 2002 compared to India's 794 kgs and the world average of 1,381 kgs. In 2012, India's productivity in wheat and rice production was lower than China. For maize, it continued to be the lower than USA, China, Brazil, Indonesia and Mexico. For sugarcane, it was more than China but lower than Brazil and Thailand. For groundnut, it was lower than the world average and the averages for China, USA, Nigeria and Myanmar. Moving on to discuss the causes of low productivity. The main causes of low productivity in agriculture in India are first, incomplete land reforms. Despite the initial efforts on part of the government to undertake land reforms in India comprising abolition of the zamindari system, improvement in the land tenure system and consolidation of fragmented holdings, the land reforms in India were only a partial success whereby land holdings continue to be of suboptimal size which does not allow increase in yields. Second, labor quality and productivity. With large dependence on agriculture, disguised unemployment results in low productivity. Generally, a large mass of the rural population is not literate and lacks training to use the right mix of inputs which is optimal for their farm size. This also results in waste of resources and lower yields. Third, small size of the holdings. The average size of the holdings for small and marginal farmers is less than 2 hectares which limits the use of better and modern inputs and machines and allows production only for subsistence. As a result, there is little surplus for the market thus limiting the ability to generate cash incomes. Rise in indebtedness further limits their prospects of breaking this impasse. Fourth, inadequate credit facilities. 
institutional credit is not forthcoming despite agriculture being a priority sector. Rural poverty and lack of collateral force farmers to borrow from the local money lender who charges usurious rates of interest and perpetuate indebtedness over generations. This limits the possibility of investment and improvement in agriculture on part of the individual farmer. Fifth, lack of public investment. The share of public investment has also been low, which affects productivity in agriculture. Lack of provision of adequate infrastructure, transport, storage and marketing and extension services keeps yield low. Sixth, non-availability of modern inputs and use of backward technology. Modern inputs like high yield variety of seeds, irrigation facilities, electricity, fertilizers and farm tools are purchased inputs which require adequate cash. Indian farmers are cash strapped whereby they are unable to procure these inputs in the right quantities at the appropriate time which affects the yields adversely. This leads to insecurity regarding the future availability of these inputs and so whenever they can access these inputs they tend to overuse them especially water, fertilizer and pesticides which has negative consequences for land quality and hence output. More recently use of genetically modified seeds imposes a constraint on the farmer in that he has to buy the seed every year which is again a major limitation of modern technology. More often farmers continue to use their older inputs which are available on farm but at the cost of production of productivity. Let us now summarize what we have learned from this module. Increase in agriculture production and productivity requires concerted policy efforts. There is a need to provide alternative employment opportunities in rural areas to release the pressure on land and thus increase labor productivity. Dissemination of information on the use of modern technology and training seeds to be imparted to farmers. Timely and reasonably priced inputs have to be made available to the farmers. There is a need to consolidate the fragmented holdings to allow optimal use of modern technology and inputs. Provision of institutional credit and warehousing and marketing facilities need to be provided to avoid distress sale and increase marketable surplus. There is a need for a rise in public investment with institutional reforms including land reforms and land tenure systems.